In this Revit tutorial, I'm going to go over how you can go about selecting items in your in your building, in your model. If I simply hover over something, like I'm hovering over a wall here or perhaps a door here, what that's doing is called pre-highlighting. So it's turning blue, it kind of has a glow about it that gives you an indication that if you click, that's the item that you will pick. It also is telling me the basic information. So it's showing me, for example, the wall here is the category, basic wall is the family, and then generic 8 inches the type. So by simply hovering over different components or elements in your model, you'll actually be able to determine the category, family, and type. If you actually want to select one of these building components, you can simply click on it and then it will activate and be selected. I can select one thing at a time by simply clicking on individual walls, for example. If I would like to select multiple items, I can simply hold down the control key and that will allow me to click on multiple walls. You'll see that when you hold on the control key, a little plus sign appears next to your cursor. That means that you'll be adding to the selection. If I simply click in outer space outside of my model, that will remove everything from the selection. So you can just click away from it if, you, if you've you know, accidentally selected something that you didn't want to. So I can select multiple things by holding down the control key. And if I would like to remove from the selection one at a time, I can simply hold down the Shift key. So it's Control to add and Shift to remove. If you are hoping to select a whole series of chained walls, for example, you can just use the tab key. Now a chained wall, as you'll discover as you work in the program, are walls that were created all at once. So for example, my perimeter walls are all chained and hooked together in one continuous loop. Those are chained. So if I hover over and pre-highlight one of my walls and then tap the tab key, it says chain of walls or lines, then I can select it and it will get all of the walls that are making up this chain. So that's hovering over one of the walls, I can pick a different one, tap the tab key, and then click with your mouse and that will get them all. The same will work here on the interior of my building, except in this case, I only get these two because these are the only two walls in that chain. Now make sure if you do that you only tap the tab key you don't hold it down. If you hold it down, you kind of get this strobe light effect, which is a little, little upsetting. So you just want to tap the tab key. Using the tab key to help you select is very common in Revit and will continue to come up. So it's a good idea to get comfortable with that. We can also use window and crossing selections in Revit, much like you do in a program like AutoCAD. So a window selection going from left to right will select things that are entirely within that solid line rectangle. So as I move my way across, going from left to right, you'll see that right now when I finally get over that window, how that window turns blue, that's because it's entirely within this rectangle. If I keep going, there we go, there's another one, and then right here I get that whole wall, and so on. So that's really helpful um, for selecting small things or if you just want to get certain elements. Left to right is a window selection. If I click and drag and go right to left and get a dotted line box, that's a crossing selection. And that means that Revit will select anything that that rectangle touches or crosses. So there's a big difference between left to right, a window selection, and right to left, a crossing selection. You can use these, um, you know, in tandem with each other. I could, for example, now hold down shift to deselect a few elements. I can hold down control to add and kind of keep making my way around with all these different selection tools. So it's not like you have to use one or the other. Finally, something that's very unique to Revit and very helpful is the filter tool. So I, I made a large selection 
and I'm able to come up to the top where it says filter. If I select the filter tool, you'll see that I can come in and I can check and uncheck things by category. So remember categories are things like doors, walls, windows, and so on. So if I only wanted to, for example, have my windows selected, I could uncheck doors and walls, keep windows selected, say OK, and now only my windows are selected. I'll select everything one more time, go back up to filter. As your model gets more complicated, this will be a fairly long list. Keep in mind that you can say check none or check all as well. So if you had a variety of objects selected here, you could say check none and then go back in your list, pick the one, two, three things that you want and that'll make it a little bit easier. As you select things, also take note of the properties palette. That's over here on the left. So right now I have one wall selected. If I go to the properties palette in the type selector, it tells me that it's a basic wall generic 8 inch, just as it does when I hover over it and pre-highlight it here. If I select two walls, it's still the basic wall generic 8 inch, and then down here it says walls 2. That means they're both the same type and I have two of them selected. If I hold control and add another one, that changes to 3. If I pick a window, I can see that it's a fixed 36 by 48 inch window and then I have one. If I hold control, select another one, you'll see same information, 2. So as long as things are the same, that information is quite clear. If, however, I come in and do a selection where I'm getting walls and windows, now the properties palette is telling me that I have multiple categories selected and that there's five of them and they're a common type. So what shows up in the properties palette is very much determined by the types of things you have here. So it's just something to keep in mind and basically everything you're doing in Revit you're getting information from many directions so it's always pretty easy to figure out what you have, where you are, what's going on.